Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on, let's go. So I thought today we do uh, oracle cards, four oracle cards, so that you can choose one that uh, you feel will give an answer to your question. And then I'll drill down on those four uh, oracle cards with a six card dyadic, dyadic cross. So remember, you can stop this uh, video and take your time to choose uh, the card that uh, suits you or multiple cards if that's what you want to do. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. Let's see how this goes. So today I'm going to do a four pick, a you pick oracle. I'm going to put down four oracle cards from Revealing Light Oracle. This is a Marianne from Revealing Light Tarot. She developed these cards. They're 40 cards, very sensitive and uh, very on point. I found uh, when I meditate, um, and that's what I've done for you, everyone who's watching. I've uh, put in some time to try to uh, direct this energy to you. After we pick the four cards, uh, then we'll drill down on them with the Tarot Mucha. So we'll just start with the Revealing Light Oracle. Love these cards. Marianne did a great job. She put them in a terrific uh, container that really keeps them well, and I enjoy uh, using that. Then the cards themselves uh, have lots of wisdom imbibed in them, thoughtfully drawn by, my goodness, it's too dark in here for me to see the name of the artist, but uh, it's a lovely, lovely deck. There's numerology in here, there's astrology. Um, and uh, just a little something for everybody. My numerology is pretty weak, as is my astrology. So if you see something in these cards that uh, you feel a connection with, then certainly drop, stop the tape and give it some time uh, to sink in for you. That's my uh, two cents worth. But uh, now that I've mixed these up just a little bit, I'm gonna take them, do a little bit of shuffle so that you can see them being mixed up on camera. And then we'll uh, choose uh, four cards for your pick. Choose any one of these cards that you think is going to be useful to you. And so I've began this uh, reading with the intention of directing uh, the energy toward uh, those of you who've been uh, watching my videos. And uh, it's besides the subscribers, I mean, there's quite a few subscribers for me anyway. And uh, But there's quite a few folks who watch who haven't subscribed. So I hope this um, is useful to you. Let me break these into four stacks and then we'll um, spread them out. You know what I'm going to do a shuffle too. We'll spread them out and you can choose the card that you think is going to be good for you. Four cards. This is going to be one, two, three. And we'll go deep here for number four. Okay, that'll be all that we'll use this deck for at this point. So let's put those away. And they can await their buddies here. So that's going to be one, two, three, and four. Okay, one and two and three and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. I'm going to start this energy reading. Number one, that's the card you chose, is resilience. Resilience. That's something we could all use right now and uh, something good to think about. So I'm going to take a minute to read over this card. The lighthouse is something that, you know, we can always count on. There's going to be a light uh, shining for us in the future. And um, this uh, resilience card is grounded in the earth. Um, the um, the um, message that it brings to us is even during the darkest storm, there's illumination within. Be your own guiding light. Never give up. Even during the darkest storm, there's illumination within. Be your own guiding light and never give up. So that's number seven, resilience. So if that was the card you chose, that's a beautiful card. Now the uh, number two card in this deck is empathy. So there's empathy. I'll give you a minute to, to familiarize yourself with what's in the card. And they're all just so thoughtfully done. The edges of the cards reveal the uh, chakra associated with them. And now this card, empathy, the message that we have here, and this card is grounded in water. And the message that we have here is when we allow 
Our compassion to inspire us, all things are possible. When we allow our compassion to inspire us, all things are possible. So full of emotion, lovely card. And if you chose number two, that was empathy. Now the number three card in this pool is perspective. We can all use perspective and sometimes we don't take the time to get perspective. And you know, sometimes we can even get caught up in our perspective. So if you chose number three, that's what you have here is perspective. And uh, this is uh, this card is uh, grounded in uh, air, fire. Am I correct on that? Yeah. And then the um, the message that this card brings to us is put your focus on your inner reality to avoid living in someone else's. That's pretty good. Put your focus on your inner reality in order to avoid living in someone else's. And that happens to us a lot of the time. We end up in someone else's reality and we put ours uh, second place. And then what happens, in fact, is our real reality gets drug along along their path and it becomes our path. So that was number three. Now, if you chose the number four card, this is love is. So funny that this should come up. I was just uh, watching um, a video uh, with, uh, is it Love Story? With uh, uh, Ryan O'Neill and uh, Ali. Gosh, I can't remember her last name. But a beautiful, beautiful card. Love is. And this is another card uh, grounded in water and emotion. And uh, this says that uh, always hopeful, infinite, and divine, and worth the climb. Love is always hopeful, infinite, and divine, and love is always worth the climb. And we find love in some of the most innocuous places sometimes. We find it in the in the face of a child, or we find it in the, the uh, purr of a kitten, or we find it in uh, when we see uh, someone being loving to someone else. Uh, in our perimeter, or even outside of our perimeter, and we happen to be lucky enough to look onto that. So love is. So if that was your card, if you chose number four, that's what we've got. Number one, resilience. Number two, empathy. Number three, perspective. And number four, love is. Now we're going to drill down on these individually. Uh, we're going to use uh, these cards. This card is a signifier, but then go ahead and put Terra Mucha right on top of it and do a dyadic cross. Okay. Make sure I get all the cards out of there. And we'll start this little divination. So, this is a nice reading for Saturday. Good way to start your weekend with a little inspiration and uh, clarity and uh, thoughtfulness. And if you chose this card of resilience, uh, maybe that's what you need at the end of your week uh, to, um, to be reminded of or to, uh, to boost your resilience. Okay, so Tarot Mucha for Resilience. That was the number one card. So we'll see what sort of a message this brings to us with the underlining story of resilience. Okay, so we're going to choose six cards, and I'll just pick them uh, as we go here. So the first card that comes to us is the Hermit. And that's a perfect card to pair with resilience. So this will be our signifier card. Uh, this resilience card that you pick for the oracle will be the uh, overall uh, tone of the reading. So the hermit tells us that um, it's time to have some perspective. And it's very interesting that this hermit uh, carries a light, just like most of them do, to show the way, to guide their way through uh, their journey. Take the time to study uh, what's ahead of you and then uh, carefully uh, make your move forward. The challenge to the Hermit in this Dyadic Cross, then, is the Two of Pentacles. And the Two of Pentacles reminds us that, um, you know, we have to keep things balanced. Sometimes it's difficult to keep those, uh, those Pentacles up in the air, but, uh, and whatever that worth is to you, it could be money, it could be some other value, uh, but to just be reminded that there's a, uh, an ocean of passion. And these two ships uh, in the background here are in for a rocky ride. So it's very important remember that your resilience comes from studying your situation and then recognizing uh, your task okay so that's what we have there the challenge to the hermit uh, the third card that we're going to pull out of here and this will be the base of this reading is going to be the nine of Pentacles and the nine of Pentacles speaks to us of really uh, having everything uh, that we need uh, to move forward. And the pinnacles, you know, it can be money, but it can be whatever's of value to you in this decision that you're trying to make. Sometimes money is kind of the last 
thing. So there's some other value, some deeper value that you may need to uh, tap into. Uh, th however, th whatever it is, as the base of this reading, this tells me that if you look for it, if you treasure those things that have built your experience to this point, you're going to find plenty of stamina and resilience and thoughtfulness and, and courage to keep things balanced uh, to make it through uh, whatever this challenge is that you have. So that's the base of the reading. Now, in the, in the near uh, past of this reading, uh, where resilience is our leader, uh, we have the uh, Knight of Cups. And this Knight of Cups comes to us full of life, full of vim and vigor, and he's traveling on a beautiful horse and carrying that, that cup of passion really very proudly and offering it forward. And um, so that just tells us that, uh, you know, in your past, uh, if you have been thoughtful, when you've crossed uh, that river of emotion and you've held your cup of passion up to guard it and to offer it forward, uh, that gave you, uh, brought you really to the point you are now. Okay. Now, the uh, sky for this reading is going to be right over here. This is going to be the Page of Cups. And uh, so the Page of Cups uh, speaks to us of someone who's uh, bringing something forth, uh, a message of emotion with a little surprise in there for us. And uh, that's kind of what we want. We want to have our, our passions ignited and jarred a little bit and made to work for us. And so take the time to review uh, whatever uh, this issue is that you're dealing with and look for the surprises and the passion that it can bring to you. Okay. Now the outcome of this for you in this uh, number one card is going to be the um, magician. So that's beautiful. The magician comes to us with all the tools that, uh, that they need uh, to make magic, to make things happen. And once you've taken the time to study your situation, once you've uh, recognized your resilience, once you've balanced the balls in the air, um, then you can choose what, what it is that it's going to take of the cups, the sword of truth, the wand of, of, of making things happen, uh, the, the value in the situation. You'll be able to make the right choice in this question, no doubt. So for resilience, uh, that's what I've got. It's a beautiful card. You are resilient. You do know what you have to study. Um, it, it will be a challenge to keep things going. Uh, you have what it takes to do it. Um, you've been through uh, these sort of things before, and you know how to navigate those troubled waters. Um, look for the surprises and embrace them, because there's always um, a, a happy uh, outcome if you look at it the right way. And, um, and you'll have everything you need to get through this question. I feel very, very certain of it. I think it's a beautiful reading for number one. So we're going to put resilience aside, and we're going to move on to number two. Okay. Number two, in this case, remember, was empathy. Grounded in emotion, when we allow our uh, compassion to inspire us, all things are possible. So remember that. That's what we have as the, as the uh, uh, base, the signifier, the self, really, of this uh, oracle draw. And then we're going to take uh, these, uh, these uh, Tarot Mucha cards, get them a little uh, mixed up for you, and we're going to move on to the energy for those of you who chose number two, for whatever issue that is that you're dealing with. Okay? We're going to shuffle these up a little bit, maybe just twice for number two. And then we're going to jump in with a diet cross reading if you chose number two. The signifier for this uh, draw then is the four of swords. You know, the four of swords also tells us to take a beat, study the situation, understand uh, at your peril of, of moving on too soon um, what uh, you need to do to make the best use of your empathy in this situation. So that's the signifier taking some time. The challenge to that then is going to be, oh, let's see, this is the chariot. Okay, moving quickly. So remember that the chariot is a, is a card of really getting things done. It tells you that uh, this is going to roll forward. And, um, and although you have had to take the time to understand what's going on here, your empathy is going to help you really uh, bulldoze through uh, this situation. Okay, so that's the challenge to really taking a rest is that things are going to want to happen quickly and you can keep up with it. 
just focus on your empathy. The base of this reading then is going to be the Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles is always telling us to work together, to make a team out of what it takes. You may have to pull uh, some resources or some value or maybe even some other people in to help you uh, decipher this issue, but they're there. Everyone you need is available to you to make this happen. Someone has a plan, you have the skill, and someone else has the uh, thoughtfulness to help you get this done. So that's what's happening here if you chose number two. The recent past for this for this drawing then is going to be the um, Page of Pentacles. Now the Page of Pentacles, you know, he brings the value to court and says, uh, you know, this is what I have. This is what you can deal with. And when someone comes to you with, with some proof or some value, you want to use everything that's within you, including your empathy, to determine uh, how that would come forward. And I think you've already accomplished that piece. You've gotten to the point to where now you need a question answered. In the sky for this reading is going to be the moon. Uh, the moon? No, this is the empress. This is the empress. And the empress comes to us with all the knowledge uh, that she needs uh, to get things done. So that's the sky of this reading. You want to aim for the very highest outcome, everything you possibly need uh, in this situation. Okay. The uh, likely outcome of this reading for you then is going to be, okay, so this is death. And death is a death. Death is the end of a cycle. And very likely, if you're involved in an empathetic uh, situation, you're going to have to realize that um, for anything to start, there has to be an end of what was. And so don't be worried. Don't uh, be afraid to end a situation and to start something new. And, you know, you can end a situation and start something new with the same situation. You know, it doesn't have to be a complete wipe the slate clean. You can get going again on a new tack in an issue that you're dealing with. So that's what I see here. If you chose number two, uh, deal with it with empathy. Okay, so we'll put uh, that away. And now we're going to concentrate on the third card. If that's what you chose, card number three is perspective, which is telling us put your focus on your inner reality to avoid living in someone else's. So, you know, and so many times, um, that's what so many of us do uh, for the people around us that we care about, that we love, or that we're responsible for or responsible to. So get a perspective and live in your own uh, perspective. So we'll do a quick shuffle of these cards and see uh, what the answer will be for us in regard to having perspective. So we'll do just three uh, shuffles of this. We'll put the cards out, and we'll start this divination. The, the signifier of this reading is strength. So if you, if, if you, to, to get this perspective, plant your feet, tame the beast with kindness, and, and you'll be able to see um, uh, where you have to go with the situation. So muster up your strength first. The challenge to this, however, is going to be the Two of Pentacles. And again, whenever we're trying to get a perspective, you know, it's we're absolutely trying to weigh this against that. And um, so recognize that. That's your challenge. Deal with it full on. Don't, uh, don't ignore it. The uh, base of this reading, however, is um, the Eight of Cups. Now, the Eight of Cups tells us, you know, sometimes... Um, and it looks like this is what's coloring this whole decision, is moving on from something that holds some value for you, some emotional importance, some, some passionate worth. And uh, so you want to make sure that uh, as you're moving on, you uh, recognize uh, that that you're leaving behind and give it its due. Okay? So that's the perspective. Recognize what you're moving on from and try to see what you're moving on to because in the past of this situation was the King of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles is telling us someone who has been in charge of their value. They've had complete control. And sometimes we don't even realize that we've had complete control. It takes us to step back and get a perspective to see that uh, we were guiding this thing all along. And, um, and once we know that, we can aim for the highest goal. The highest goal in this regard 
is going to be the page of the page of cups again. And so the page of cups is telling us that there can be surprises. Some information is going to come forward. It's going to be compassionate information. Um, and it may be subtle, but there will be something there that's going to help you focus on that perspective. And then the likely outcome for all of this then is going to be this final card, which is celebrations. And celebrations, it's a beautiful card. You've got three uh, lovely maidens uh, having a beautiful celebration with three cups. And, uh, and so whenever we give the situation its due, you can come out of this in a, in a hopeful way. So just know that, that take a step back, give it perspective, be willing to recognize what you're walking away from and aim for the sky. You're going to be fine. This really is, you're going to be fine in this. The final card then is the fourth card. If you chose number four, this card tells us that love is always hopeful. Love is infinite. Love is divine. Love is worth the climb. So that's the card we have here for number four. So let's see uh, how we can drill down on that with these, uh, these Terramucha. So we got one. We'll go two. We'll go three. We'll go four. And I just feel inspired to even divide these into four uh, groups here. And let's see how this comes out for us. Love is. Love is. The signifier card, again, in this is the uh, two of pentacles. Love is give and take and keeping everything up in the air. It really is. Now, the challenge to that two of pentacles and, and love is the hangman. You know, looking at something from another uh, another another way from someone other else's point of view or from a point of view that may only be yours but different from what you were what you were considering okay and uh, love is infinite and worth the climb in this case especially now the base of this reading for uh, is then for number four is the eight of wands the eight of wands you know is a lot of issues coming forward a lot of things to deal with and we have to have the uh, foresight to uh, I love this card because this maiden is letting these issues come to ground behind her and I love to think that sometimes when everything's up in the air it maybe it takes a minute to let things settle down and then you can pick up these issues and deal with them appropriately rather than being so um, overwhelmed uh, by what they represent in the past of this reading however is um, the Four of Cups. And the Four of Cups speaks to us of, you know, something that we didn't expect, that maybe we don't want. In this uh, instance, it seems to be that, and that maybe that's what brought this this issue to front, uh, but it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. We have plenty left uh, to, to get us over uh, the hump. In the sky of this reading, then, is going to be the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands speaks to us of really having been to the battle and, and come through it. You know, we're, we're, we've got something left in us to do some more. And uh, that's what the Nine of Cups, or the Nine of Wands, I'm sorry, tells us, is that it's been uh, not as easy as we would have liked it, but we have done it, and we can do it again if we have to. The final outcome for this, then, is going to be the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is just that. She has mastered those issues or that issue and they are hers now to deal with and 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 outcome uh that where she is making that decision for us so i think that if the number four card was yours i hope that something that's come out of this reading has been helpful in helping you see that you can be in control of this uh, issue uh, and just remember that it's all about love it always is so that's the reading the four card oracle draw for this reading. And I thank you so much. So I really think those are some terrific messages that came through and it's getting so dark here, but um, uh, it was worthwhile uh, taking the time to understand them. And uh, so whatever those, uh, whatever your messages were, whatever your questions were, whichever card you picked or multiple cards, um, if something didn't land for you right now, put this aside and bring it back um, and take a look at it a little bit later. And, uh, and um, so just, just 
understand that you have all the intuition and everything within you to make uh, the right choices. We all do. Well, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Thank you so very much for coming along. I really love uh, seeing so many of you are watching. And um, come on back. We'll do it again tomorrow. I'll be here. Ciao for now.